Paulo here. Today I want to showcase the updated version of the shader ball for Corona Renderer. So this is version 2.0 and before I dive into the scene parameters, I just want to mention that the original design is from Ludwig Kautney. So this is his design for the shader ball. I use this image as a base for me to model mine. And I've made my own uh, scene, so that's why it's looking different. You might recall version 1.1 I released over a year ago here at the Corona forums. And I'm going to also update this post. And you might recall it also from the Corona materials website, where you can share and use freely uh, all the materials here. And I just want to mention that the HDR image that I'm using to light this scene is from this website. You can grab the um, link here from the description and you should download the HDR version and put it inside the text folder and you should be okay. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's dive into the scene parameters. So, um, when we select the shader ball here, we've got access to these parameters. Uh, let me lock these. And this top section is related to the shader ball and another piece of geometry here, which is a piece of cloth for when we need to make fabric type of materials. And we've got here two fields where we can drag and drop our materials, one for the shader ball and one for the cloth geometry. So we can control these independently. And here we can also use depth of field if we want. So let me actually show you these. So this is the 200 centimeter diameter version using the depth of field on. As you can see, the background is slightly out of focus. Next, we've got the middle size, so to speak, which is 50 centimeter. And of course, on the smaller size, the effect is absolutely more apparent like this. And this is what looks like we know it off at all. So it's really up to you if you want to use depth of field on or off. So another thing that um, this scene has is these three different sizes in order for us to really test properly our materials. And another thing that it's related when we select each of these is the fact that we've got here this text that lets us know which version are we using. So um, it's really easy for us to be aware of that because if we don't have these locked and we don't have the shadow ball selected, we can uh, have access to this information constantly. Okay, so now we need to go through these parameters here. For each size, we've got parameters to control our UV tiles and offsets. So I've done this so we can really control our texture placements. And we've got controls either for the shadow ball itself and for the cloth material in all sizes. Let me just show you how we can actually use this. So let me grab this material and drop it here. And now we can see that it updated. So this is the bigger size. If we go to the mid size, we've got it also here and also on the smaller one. So let's make a very quick test here. I should mention that for these tests, we are using the path tracer. So this way we can really get uh, feedback a lot quicker. So this is what it's looking like with these parameters. So of course, when using the mid size, we need to use different parameters for the shadow ball. This is what it's looking like. So the texture should be bigger, as is. And also for the smaller one. On these, I should actually even use smaller numbers here, but because the texture is not high resolution enough, um, I didn't use the proper 
numbers just for you guys to have a look at how this same texture should look like at different sizes. So this is for you know the shader ball. So let's now test with a cloth material. So let's go to the bigger size. Okay, so as you can see, for this type of materials having a geometry like this might really help us to really test the materials properly. So this is for the bigger size. Let's test for the mid size. So as you can see, and let me show you, the texture is like, it's using a bigger scale, so to speak, because we are supposedly closer to the geometry. Let me actually render a smaller size. So as you can see, we've got perfect control over our textures now. I really hope you guys like these updates and that you will be able to use this scene to your advantage. Play with these parameters and make those beautiful shadow ball renders. So if you want to show your appreciation, please subscribe to the channel and drop me a like below. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.